You know, I'm not too sure why it seems like everybody in the gaming media kind of wants Phil Spencer gone right now. Or, you know, they kind of want these big shakeups at Xbox. And it's like a lot of the PlayStation fanboys want this too. And then this thing is really prevalent on social media where you get a lot of the Xbox fans kind of chiming in to quote unquote keep it real. Uh, you know, apparently you can only keep it real if you're bashing Xbox 24-7. Uh, and I've covered that ad nauseum. But the problem with this is what would happen if Phil Spencer was gone, right? All these media outlets saying, oh, heads need to roll this xbox keeps letting us down uh and then you know the next day they'll write an article covering some game that gets delayed or you know something that's uh you know they won't talk about the playstation situation with one first party game or you know the way that they've i've never heard of three canceled games and a closed down studio less loud than what's going on with sony right now it's almost the media type situation where you know they they build up the republican side of things as being this these huge deals and then on the democratic side nothing's a big deal right oh hunter biden's a crackhead and and did all this illegal stuff and joe biden has this that and the other and uh you know he's not really there and blah 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 but we're not going to talk about that but let's talk about this stuff that we trumped up on trump that ended up and then you never see any retraction for any of that stuff like that all that collusion stuff ended up not being true and Again, I'm not trying to get political, but it's almost like that in in the in the comparisons is what I'm trying to say. You know, every if Microsoft this past week had closed or canceled three games and closed the studio, it would have been still news. Everybody would have been talking about it nonstop. It happens to Sony and literally crickets uh, right now. So the interesting thing is that I've been talking about this. A lot of people are talking about Starfield. Um, you know, this came out from IGN and I did a video on that as well. And they were basically saying, you know, Starfield has a lot of pressure on it. If it sucks, it's going to do this or that or the other thing for the, for the record, I'm friends with Jez Gordon from windows central. Um, he's only, he's a credible insight. You know, he's got sources. He's credible. He said he's only heard good things about the game, and he's he was honest about Redfall and honest about all the other stuff too that's gone on. And you know, a lot of people are just waiting for Xbox to fail. They want Xbox to fail. But I will state again, uh, Starfield, right, is not going to make or break Xbox. Okay, uh, regardless of what it does. You know, some people, if this game scores an 87 Metacritic, some people might look at that as a failure. I personally don't. I think that, you know, anything above 80 is phenomenal. So uh, the way that people sort of treat Xbox differently than the competition is a little bit weird. So we saw that IGN was going in on Xbox in this narrative. And then, of course, basically copying and reiterating that was Forbes. You know, which is weird. So he starts it off by saying, My friend Dustin, Destin Legary over at IGN has been getting flack for his article that said Starfield feels like an Xbox's last chance at redemption. Hot take, Starfield is Xbox's most important game since Halo 1. Uh, that's what he tweeted. Technically, I'm not sure I agree with either of those statements. First, Microsoft has enough cash to fund its Xbox ambitions essentially forever, and that likely means another entirely new generation in three to five more years to try and reset the narrative yet again. Second, I would probably say that Halo Infinite was Xbox's most important game since Halo 1, and that was already an overall miss, so things aren't going great. But he does agree with the content and sentiment of the piece. It is absolutely impossible to argue that Starfield is not crucial to the entire structure and narrative of the arrest of Xbox Series X generation, which we know. But again, let me say this. Let's say Starfield is great. Let's say it scores a 90 on a Metacritic. Um, there's always going to be some negative and some reason to hate on it, though, right? They're going to go, well, what are the sales? What are the sales? They aren't going to pay attention to 20 million people playing it through Game Pass or any of that. The narrative will completely change to, oh, this was really a miss because of this reason and what are the sales and blah, blah, blah. Like, that's exactly how these things kind of work. And it's really unfortunate um, because I feel like Microsoft has set themselves up in this totally other context and people don't really pay attention to that. They just think that if they're not doing the exact same things as Sony, um, that it, everything's a failure. And I'm here to point out that that's not the case at all. You know, honestly, it's not the case. There there are so many different ways to judge success. And I've mentioned this numerous times. Like, if we're only basing things that sell the most or as being the best, that really puts us all in this piss poor situation. Like, you can get a burger at McDonald's, right, if you like burgers. But I can guarantee you 
There's a million other burger places that sell better burgers, but they haven't sold as many burgers, right? <laughs> I, I'm just saying. So basically, um, it talks about Redfall again, which was a high-profile Xbox exclusive. Uh, the the newly purposed mega publisher from Arcane, who does not miss and produce Game of the Year contenders, and Redfall was one of the worst AAA games in recent memory. Not just a miss, but a true disaster. Which again, like I don't understand that that saying it's a complete disaster. But he says he's consider it worse than almost any famously bad uh, reboot, Anthem or Godfall, and it's reviewing worse than these two, um, even the Saints Row reboot. So. I don't know. He says, then you should be able to agree that Starfield is likely a bigger endeavor than anything coming after it. The big trinity of promised future Xbox's releases are Perfect Dark, Fable, and Avowed, all of which have shown nothing but tiny teasers. Uh, if that, despite being announced a long time ago. Again, I want to say, to these people, a long time ago is 2021, 2020. Like, I don't know. We're in 20. That's 2.5 years ago, right? Like, that's not really that long ago, right? If you think about it, Wolverine was announced that amount of time and nobody's calling for that right nobody's like oh where's that nobody's bringing up kotor remake that probably according to jeff grubb will never release because it's in such a bad state and people might go well that has nothing to do with sony sony were the ones apparently that were funding this thing and now it's being made at a sony studio or something along those lines so yeah like there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes here but people that are calling for oh well if this thing doesn't hit uh phil spencer should go what do people think would happen if phil spencer left that's what I want to know. Do you honestly think that Phil Spencer leaves and they bring, let's just say for the sake of things, they bring in Sarah Bond because that's a popular choice. People are like, well, just bring in Sarah Bond. That's going to, you know, that's a popular choice that, you know, we'll bring in a woman that'll, that'll really stick with the whole uh, agenda situation and that'll make things all better. Well, guess what? Is she going to make these games come out any quicker? Will anybody make games come out any quicker? And if they did come out quicker, what's to say they wouldn't be in a Redfall type shape? You know, it doesn't make sense to do that. You have to let, let these games cook. People that are fighting last year's war, which basically is anything past, you know, 2017 and, and before that, I don't understand the argument. This is a completely different thing. Yes, we had to wait, wait, wait. It sucks. But what did you expect was going to happen when you bought brand new studios and a pandemic hit or these studios had other obligations with first party like what did people think was going to happen right like I, i'm just curious what did people think was going to happen like did they think that these why is xbox studios supposed to be able to perfectly put out things through a pandemic perfectly put out things despite having other obligations perfectly be able to put out things despite you know only having half the time that people allow nintendo and sony to put together games uh, the amount of time like people aren't like going where's uh where's my uh, last of us three you know i mean the, the last of us two came out in 2020 and it was supposed to come out in 2019 ghost of tsushima came out in 2020 i believe that was delayed too from 2019 so again we're already three years into that point and nobody's hollering for those other games right so again, it's like this double standard kind of going on it when it comes to Xbox, and it's kind of getting old hat. I would kind of like to know your guys' uh, opinions on this. Like, why would people be calling for Phil Spencer to be kicked out of Xbox? Like, I don't understand that at all. I feel like he's really kind of changed uh, the narrative of Xbox and has made it kind of acceptable in a lot of ways. So I, I would just like your guys' thoughts and opinions on this, though. Let me know what you think. I'll link the article. How do you feel about it? If Starfield is a miss, is it a problem? Does Phil need to go? Uh, only answer that if you're an Xbox fan. I'm not looking for peanut gallery comments. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Crab Gamer. This has been Crab Gamer Reviews. Rack them up.